Carl Pauline, uh, we've got him presentation expert, and uh, Carl, just um, we have a quick interview with him about the uh, you know, Pyeongchang Olympics and right. presentations in general. So, Carl, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, hi, my name is uh, Carl, and uh, I've been teaching here in Korea for about ten years now, and currently I run my own consultants. Uh, consultancy company working in seminars with many, many, many Korean companies around Seoul and actually outside of Seoul too these days. So basically that's me. But originally I come from England. Great, great. So you've been here 10 years. So what did you do when you first got here? Panic. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what brought you, that's what attracted you, was the yeah, panic, right. it was a sense of panic, wasn't it? I do, I, I like the sense of panic, yes. It, it was, um, no, I don't, to be fair, I didn't receive any culture shock. Um, I, f I found Korea to be a very pleasant and nice country to live in. I think it took me about four months to get used to the food, but once you got used to the food, that's it. I'm, all I ever eat these days is Korean food, so... Um, but that was the only difficulty I had. Right. Okay, good. So 10 years. So when you first, you know, what was sort of your first, you know, your, your career path, I guess? Well, before I came to Korea? Once you arrived in Korea, you thought, okay, you panicked, and then you thought, okay, what am I going to do? I used the food. Now I've got to figure out how I'm going to put more food on the table. What, what did you do, and how did you end up where you are now? Oh, okay, right. Well, I, um, I worked for Minbyon Cholo Hagwon, or BCM, for eight of the years that I've been in Korea. Um, I've worked with Min Byung Cho. I still work with him from time to time. And um, basically I worked my way up through that company to be academic director, uh, which was responsible for teaching the, the native English teachers training. And I also developed their business English program, which ran from 2006 to, well, it's still running today. So, um, and I still have part-time involvement with that program. Okay, and how did you get into the whole presentations training and, and that kind of thing? Ah, uh, well, with presentation training, that was because um, I, I quickly realized that there wasn't actually that many resources for Korean business people in, in Korea to, to develop their English presentation abilities. And... I've always enjoyed public speaking, even when I was in high school, and actually middle school, I was doing public speaking competitions and uh, reading the Bible in our school assembly every morning whenever I could. So I've loved public speaking all my life. It's kind of like been a passion of mine. So the opportunity to teach people how to do it, how to overcome their fears, how to communicate their message, that's something that really, really got me interested and I researched and researched and well, here I am today teaching Hyundai and Gear, all, all these companies now. Awesome. It's great. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, really good. So, okay. um, so you want to Yeah, why, why don't we start with the yeah. questions then, Carl? So, okay, no problem. Okay, so what's your opinion about each of the Pyeongchang presentations then? Well, the, the Pyeongchang presentations, I've managed to see most of them. I, I think I've missed the, the director's presentation, but I've seen all the others. And the, the, they all fitted very, very well together. They, they all contained stories. They were short. They were very, very well spoken. And uh, I can un fully understand why they won. Um, the message was very, very clear. And... Uh, it was really good to see that they, they didn't focus too much on you know, North Korea and South Korea, which Korean as a country has done that a lot in the past. And it was good to see that they focus on the, the harmony and they focus on positive aspects of, of Pyeongchang running the Olympic Games and for other parts of Asia too. So that was a really good part of their presentation. The message was very, very strong. And obviously got the result. It did, yes. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Not much you can say, you know, because it, it, it worked, you know. Yeah. Um, but was there anything specific about, you know, for example, President Lee or, or Yana's presentation that you particularly liked? Well, President Lee, I think, was probably actually my favorite uh, presentation because he clearly had a difficulty with pronunciation. And 
it didn't matter. I mean, I don't know why. It was really difficult to kind of put your finger on it. But in English, he has an awful lot of chat. I know he's not the most popular guy in Korea. But in English, he is... Uh, by the way, guys, I think my camera's gone off. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it. You, you, you could have just um, frozen. Yeah, hang on a second. I will... Um, looking face there right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I just suddenly gone... That's not moving. <laughs> no, it's not moving, is it? Nope. Yeah. There you go. It's back on again now. Okay, we'll see okay. if you come back. Yeah, we'll see if you come back. There you there go. There you go. Oh, very close now. Yeah. <laughs> now, why did my camera go up? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's time to switch up to, 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 a, new, to a new computer, maybe. Let <laughs> me get the MacBook Air yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're going to be there now. They're going to have to get it now. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so as you were saying, did you want to just continue with what you were saying with the, the pronunciation? And the... Yeah, with uh, uh, President Lee, I mean, he clearly had the pronunciation difficulties, but that didn't really matter because his passion and his enthusiasm and um, his career, clear belief in what he was saying really, really came through. And with Yuna Kim, I mean, well, that was just... And what can you say? I mean, that was a perfect presentation, right down to the to the the, the, the bottom line. I mean, it, everything about her presentation was just perfect. There was nothing wrong. You couldn't really pick up on anything. Her message was clear. Her stories were brilliant. I mean, it was perfect, really. She she has very good English, though. I understand. She certainly has. Yes, she certainly. Obviously, it comes. It came through very well. Um, now, obviously, you know we all know uh, between us certainly the preparation is very, very important um, mm -hmm. for any presentation, of course. And um, we did in the articles we heard a little bit about President Lee's preparation on the plane. Yes. But if if you've got really limited um, preparation time, um, what are the most important things to prepare then for the presentation? Well, to me, uh, I mean, if you're really restricted on time, you shouldn't really be doing a presentation. Um, but it largely depends on how important the presentation is, to be fair. Um, because, it, I mean, I don't know if everybody knows this, but Steve Jobs, basically, 48 hours before one of his presentations, he's on stage. And he's practicing, practicing, and practicing. And it largely depends on the importance of the presentation. But if you're really restricted on time, then I'd focus on sounding natural because what a lot of people will do is they'll write a script and then they'll try and memorize the script and if that fails, they'll read the script. And as soon as they do that, all emotion and all intonation just disappears from their voice and it, it just goes wrong from that point. So if you're really limited on time, then you've got to focus on sounding natural. Good tip, I think. Yeah, that's a good yeah. tip. So, you know, as you mentioned before, like if they are, if, if English is not their first language and if they're really trying to sound natural, uh, how important is that pronunciation? You said Mr. Lee's present, you know, pronunciation wasn't that good, but it didn't really matter. But how important do you think it is then? I don't think pronunciation is important at all, actually. Um, I've, I've been listening very carefully. I and mean, one of the things that you have to remember is that English language, there are more non-native English speakers than there are native speakers. So we actually get used to listening to so many different pronunciations, so many different accents and dialects from all over the world. And really, the key to speaking well is not speaking like an American would speak or a British guy or an Australian or a Canadian. The key is speaking slowly and clearly. And it doesn't really matter if you say professor or professor um, or you say Ferrari instead of Ferrari. It really doesn't matter because everyone knows what you're talking about. And actually, that little uniqueness in your pronunciation gives you a bit more character and a bit more believability. So I wouldn't be too worried about pronunciation. I'd be more worried about sounding natural, sounding enthusiastic and sounding like you really believe what you're saying. Very good tip, actually. Okay, that's a great yeah, that's a great, yeah, that's a really great point. That's something that people always worry about, especially here. They always mm -hmm. want to sound American. 
Or they yeah. are, or oh, British, oh, British, you know, sometimes. British. <laughs> On the rare occasion, I've heard people want to be British sounding, but... <laughs> but not never Canadian. They never right. want to be Canadian, so you know, that just screws it for yeah. me totally. But anyway, that's a very good tip, though. Okay. And and um, the other thing we wanted to really ask you, uh, Carl, was in the Olympic presentations, um, space was very limited for the presenters. So when you've got a limited space to do your presentation in, what about the use of body language? The, well. I think using gestures is very important. I mean, sticking your hands down your, the side of your leg or sticking your hands in your pocket looks a little bit unnatural. But, I mean, using gestures like this is, is very, very useful because it helps to express and stress what you're talking about. Um, but there are times, I mean, even I've had this situation where I've had to stick behind a, a lectern and sometimes there's not much you can do about it. You've just got to go with what you've got. Um, in the ideal world we have a full big stage to run around on and play around with but from time to time you're going to be, be behind a podium. The only thing I can suggest in that situation is uh, make sure, the, the, the important thing is look at your audience, move your head. Look from the left to the right, don't just look at the back wall, use your arms, I mean there's always going to be room to move your arms around a little bit. But make sure your eyes are looking at different parts of your audience at all times. That's really, really important. <laughs>